Hello everyone, my name is Patricia Cornelio. I'm a PhD student at the Interact Lab from the University of Sussex. And today I'm going to present uh, this paper about agency, which is Beyond the Libet Clock Modality Variance for Agency Measurements. So this is a work in collaboration with the University of Copenhagen. The co-authors are Emanuela Magioni, Kasper Hornbeck, Mariana Obrist, and my supervisor, uh, Srinan Subramanian. So as this paper is about agency, I would like to start my presentation by defining the sense of agency. So the sense of agency refers to the experience of control over one's own actions and how these actions produces events or influence events in the external world. So it refers to attribution of judgment, which means that I recognize myself as the agent of an action. Wittgenstein asks, what is left over if I subtract the fact that my hand goes up from the fact that I raise my hand? In this case, the answer is the sense of agency. When I say I raise my hand, that means that I decide to do it, and that represents an experience of control in my own actions. And we feel agency really all the time in all the actions that we do every day, and we perceive it as a result of action effect causality where I perform an action, then I perceive an outcome, which is a consequence of my action, and then I feel agency. I did that. And this feeling is particularly important in our interaction with technology, especially in user interfaces, where actions are input commands, and outcomes are system feedback. <clears throat> if this interaction produces user sense of agency, then I'm going to feel okay, I, I am controlling this. So for this reason, it's very important to measure the sense of agency. So we want to measure agent, agency to uh, design better user interfaces. The most common method to measure sense of agency is by subjective judgment, which means questionnaires. So you can find questions like, how much control did you feel about this? Or rate your level of agency in a scale from one to seven, for example. But this is quite subjective. So there is a lot of research on agency saying that explicit judgment of agency is subject to a lot of cognitive biases. Because normally the, the way in which uh, we, we think that we are deciding is different from the way that the brain actually decides for us. For, the, for these reasons, um, also quantitative measures have been proposed. One example is the intentional binding paradigm, which links agency experience and perception of time. So the intentional binding paradigm indicates that if I perform a voluntary action, for example, a button press, that produces an outcome, for example, a beep, if the interval between these two events is fixed, for example, 250 milliseconds, by using a clock called a Libet clock on a screen to measure perception of time, I'm going to perceive the action as occur a bit later compared with the actual action, and this is called action binding. In similar way, I'm going to perceive the outcome as occur a bit earlier compared with the actual outcome, and this is called outcome binding. So this creates a perceived interval that is smaller than the actual interval. If this perceived interval is smaller, that means higher action binding and higher outcome binding, and this is then associated to higher sense of agency. During the intentional binding task, participants are shown a clock, a libet clock on a screen that is rotating, and then there is an action. We record the actual time of the action on the clock, and then participants report the, their perception of time by relocating the, the dot of the clock at the position where it was at the moment of the action or outcome. To calculate intentional binding, so we record the actual time of the action and also the perceived time. Then the error, which is the difference between, between actual time and perceived time, is used to calculate action binding. In this case, action binding is normally a positive value. Similar way, we record the actual time of the outcome and the perceived time. Then the error, which is a difference, is used to calculate outcome binding, but in this case, outcome binding is usually a negative value. Then we calculate total binding, which is just the summation of these two elements. <laughs> 
So as you may notice, this time in a stimulus to measure agency using the intentional binding paradigm is quite visually demanding. So it requires participants to look at a clock on a screen. And, um, they need to pay attention and it's quite visual. Of course, if the task involves another visual element, we are going to create a conflict. So in this paper, we were wondering what about other sensory modalities? What about auditory or haptic time and stimulus? The motivation of this work is based on research in virtual reality. So there are a lot of research uh, that investigate aspects of agency taking advantage of virtual reality or visualizations of um, avatars on a screen. Of course, virtual reality is too visual. If we use a visual method, uh, we will create a conflict in the senses. For this reason, the, these studies are limited by the use of questionnaires and the subjective judgment of agency. So to explore different modalities of timing and stimulus, we conducted two user studies. And the first one we wanted to ask this question, is it possible to measure agency through the intentional binding paradigm using a timing and stimulus that is not visual? So in this case, we compare visual and auditory timing and stimuli. In the first task, we uh, conducted a traditional leave it clock uh, task. Here, every trial started when participant pressed the foot switch and then the time and stimulus was presenting. It was the clock on the screen rotating. And then in some point, participants perform a voluntary action, a button press, which produced an outcome, a beep, after 250 milliseconds. And then participants reported their perception of time by using the clock. Then another visual timing that is in the literature, the same than the, the Libet clock, is this one. So we presented participants a random sequence of consonants on a screen with a specific frequency. So participants uh, look at the screen and, and saw this uh, sequence of letters. They perform a voluntary action that produced an outcome. And here they were asked to, pre to report the consonant that was shown on a screen at the moment of the action or outcome. So these two, visual, uh, these two methods are visual. But here we uh, introduce another method that is similar to the visual alphabet, but here we presented the consonant, the consonants through audio using headphones. So here participants were uh, listening the sequence of consonants and they reported the consonant they heard at the moment of the action or outcome. And they reported the letter using a response mapping. In this video, you can see the procedure of the leave it clock task. So it was a clock rotating, there was an action, a beep, and then participants reported the perception of time on the clock using an external controller. The visual alphabet is like this. Participants were looking at the uh, consonants on the screen. There was an action, a beep, and they uh, reported the letter they saw on the screen by using a response mapping. And then the audio alphabet. E -J -O -R -G -E -I -D -U -B -L -N -P -T -H -W -S -Y -M -B. Something like this. So there was an action outcome and report the, the time. In our study, we, uh, 16 participants took part, all right-handed and five female. We compare the three timing types. And of course, we measure intentional binding as a marker of the sense of agency. And additionally, we also measure uh, subjectively uh, emotion responses. So we use as a, a questionnaire to measure the three dimensions of emotion, pleasure, arousal, and dominance. So this was just to uh, measure user experience because sometimes it's good to compare the quantitative and qualitative or subjective uh, measure. In the results, we found that we could actually measure intentional binding using the uh, auditory timing. As you can see here, action binding is a positive value as it represents a delayed awareness, and outcome binding is a negative value as it represents an early awareness. Then the total binding is the summation of these two elements. So here we found similar effects in the three timing types of about 80 milliseconds in total binding, and crucially we found no statistically significant difference in action binding, outcome binding, or total binding. However, in the subjective evaluation of emotion, we found that audio timing was significantly more engaging than the visual timings, as participants reported being more aroused and dominant with the audio alphabet compared with the traditional leave it clock. And actually, the leave it clock was reported with lack of engagement. Some participants say that it was very boring and even hypnotizing. 
Uh, however, we found no effect in the pleasure dimension. So this suggests that participants' perception of time was not modified because of the timing method used, either visual or auditory. However, participants felt more aroused with the audio timing compared with the traditional visual timing, uh, such as the libet clock. So with these results, we wanted to uh, answer another question in a second study. In this case, we wanted to see if it's possible to measure agency using the intentional binding paradigm, but in this case, using a haptic timing. In our study, we compared the traditional libet clock. The procedure was exactly the same, but here, the haptic timing consisted in presenting the, uh, a constant uh, tactile stimulation on the hand, and of course there was a, a voluntary action, an outcome, but here participants reported the position on the hand where the stimulation was provided at the moment of action or outcome. So the task was like this. We presented the haptic stimulus in, in the participants' non-dominant hand. performed an action, a beep, and then participants reported the position on the hand. So we attach a brush on a motor rotating to provide the tactile stimulation. In our study, 18 participants took part and we compared the two timing types, visual, the libet clock and the haptic clock. Of course, we measure intentional binding and the three dimensions of emotion, pleasure, arousal, and dominance. In the results, we found something similar. So we found also about 80 milliseconds in total binding, and we found no statistically significant difference in action binding, outcome binding, or total binding. However, in the subjective evaluation of emotion, we found that participants felt more aroused when using the haptic timing compared with the traditional libet clock. Here, we found no effect on pleasure or uh, dominance dimension. So to summarize this, uh, this suggests that participants' time judgment, again, was not modified because of the timing method used, either visual or haptic. However, participants felt more aroused when using uh, the tactile stimulation compared with the traditional libet clock. So I would like just to conclude my talk by saying that in this paper, we explore different types of uh, time, timing stimulus to measure agency using the intentional binding paradigm, even when this um, sensory modalities are different in many ways. They involve different cognitive processes. But if we use, it, use them as a marker of time to measure perception of time using intentional binding paradigm and thus investigate agency, we, we could use them uh, to explore aspects of agency, especially in human-computer interaction, for example. Of course, the Libet clock method has been used in a lot of uh, studies in previous research. But if our task, if we want to measure agency and our task involves visual information, a lot of visual elements, we could use an auditory timing or a haptic timing. This is the end of my talk. Thank you very much. question for you then. So um, looking at this, there's some resemblances to NBAC task and timing. So I'm just wondering, the way you presented the audio, audio cues, right? Did you vary the speed at all of these? or And did you also consider uh, people's, let's say, working memory capacity to see whether uh, how well they might remember numbers to begin with? So in, in this case, it was more about perception of time. So. Uh, in this case, uh, reaction time is uh, something different. I would say that perception of time is more about uh, this happened at the moment when I was doing an action or an outcome. In the case of the uh, alphabets that we use, we uh, use a specific pre frequency. For example, it was like 200, 250 milliseconds each letter that was showing on the screen, and we try to keep consistency like in the visual alphabet or auditory alphabet and also uh, compared with the libet clock and the haptic clock. So we try to keep like the similar uh, characteristics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a question there? No, yes, okay. no other questions?